Steph here with Crafty Ladybug. Today's lesson is going to be on the mini bucket or pail, or you can even use it as a flower pot if you did it in the correct colors, or make any pot or bucket of any color of your choice. Uh, the me medium bucket had also been done uh, for the popcorn bucket. So if you've already done the popcorn bucket, this is sort of a duplicate tutorial for you. But for those of you that have not done the popcorn bucket, you can also alternate the colors as you lay them out on the loom to give you this variegated look as the popcorn bucket was. Let's begin our tutorial with our center column taken out of our loom. Our arrows want to be pointing towards the right and your cup portion, the C part, is pointing towards the left. This medium bucket is going to take around 65 bands. Um, I didn't count them exactly, but it's about 65 bands. And we're going to be doing 10 lines around, or like a circle of 10 bands around. So I want you to take your first band and set it on the loom in a random area here in the center. And that's going to be your band number one, band number two, Band number three, band number four, band number five is coming down, band number six is coming to the left, band number seven, band number eight, band number nine, and band number ten. For band number ten, I want you to take your hook, lift up the first side of band number one and you're going to put band number 10 down and then stretch it across and then you're going to replace band number one so here we have got 10 bands around our loom the next step that we want to do is to start the top of the bucket and this is a looping technique that we need to do to get that little edge wrapped around our bucket you want to reach into peg number one, grab band number 10, and bring it to the peg it came from. Reach in, band number nine, and take it to where it came from. And you'll see mine just slid off right there. That's okay, just stretch it back out onto the peg that it came, came off of. And we're going to do this all the way around the loom until we get back to our starting point. This side's a little awkward because the movement's awkward with the pegs. And truthfully, I would turn my loom if I was doing this by myself, but on camera, I just wanna try to do it as you guys would see it. So I'm just reaching in and I'm grabbing the bottom band and I'm just looping it into the direction that it came from. And you'll do this for, whoops, and you saw that one just flew completely off. And that's okay. I'm going to pick up this peg here. I'm going to replace it. I'm just going to slide that back over. If that didn't happen to you, just admit that step. Bands always fall off that peg on me for some reason. And it's really awkward for me to try to do it at this angle just because it's not a comfortable position for me. So I apologize. Now we get to this last one and you'll see the kind of a triangle look here. You still want to loop in, get that band out, wiggle it out, and bring it to its forward peg, to our starting peg. Now go ahead and push all of this down. And the next thing we need to do is to line up 10 more all the way around the loom again. So you're just going to take a single band and you're going to lay it around the loom five times. We're going to do five layers here. So to count my layers of bands, I just put an extra band over here on the end. That way I know that that's layer number one. I'm working on layer number one. So we just lay our bands in a clockwise fashion, lay them out on the loom, all ten around. This is not super difficult. Stretch those out and around and come back to our starting point. And now that we're to our starting point, I have to lift up my loom and turn it around because I can't reach these bands that I need to get to as it was there. 
uh, what you do next is to take on your first peg, your starting peg, the bottom two bands, and on the outside, you're going to be flipping them over into the center. The next peg, you want the bottom two bands, flip them over and into the center. We're going to do this all the way around the loom with the bottom two pegs. I'm going too fast, hit the pause button to catch up, but you're just simply grabbing the bottom two pegs and folding them over. And there, that slipped off my hook. I'm just going to push them down to make sure that I'm getting the correct bottom two. Separate them out if you have to. And just flip on over. And now that we're done this layer, our starting point is back up here. We want to push those down again. And we need to do a second row. So I'm just putting a counter band on my peg here so that I know I'm working on my second layer. And we're just simply going to loop or lay the bands all the way around again. A set of 10. And lay those around back to our starting point. Once we get to our starting point, guess what we have to do again? Bottom two, loop over, bottom two, loop over, bottom two, loop over, bottom two, loop over. Two, loop over. And on this corner, for some reason, they always like to slide up and off on me. But that's okay. Got it. And we switch to the other side. We're still doing the same thing. The bottom two, and looping them over. Back to my starting point being up here. And I just need to push all of this down. And we need to do row number three. Row number three going on my counter peg. And you guys can feel free to fast forward or pause, but we need to do this a total of five times. So if you're going to watch the video with me, I know it's a bit repetitive. For some of you, I may go too fast, and that's okay. Just hit the pause button until you get all your bands laid out on the loom. That's row number three on there. And I'm turning to grab the bottom two and loop over. Grabbing the bottom two, loop over. Two and over. Bottom two, over. Two and over. And there it goes again, slips off. It does it every time, every time I do it. And whoops. Two and over, two and over, two and over, two and over, and two and over. Okay, we're going to push all of those down. And I am working on row number four now. I'm going to put my fourth band on here. And the reason why I have those counter bands is because I'm I'm not gonna lie, I simply forget what number I'm on. I forget how many layers I do. So I just line them up there, and when I forget, I go back and I recount them. And this is just still repetitive step. Going all the way around. And we're going to turn again, two and over, two and over, two and over, two and over, and this one's going to slide off again on me, <gasps> didn't that time. And this is pretty repetitive, once you get the motion down, it goes pretty quickly. 
and push down again. And our bucket's starting to form in there. Or a flower pot or whatever you wish to turn it into. That was number four and this is number five. My final round for this. And then we get to change to a different technique to do the bottom of the bucket. But this is our round number five. We're just going to keep going around, around and around like a merry-go-round. Okay, last time for this step here, two and over, 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 and of course that one slid off on me again. Push that down. Two and over, two and over. Can't grab those bottom two. Trying to rush for you, Speedy Gonzalez. I'm sorry. Let's slow down. And everybody needs to work at their own pace, too. Okay, I'm going to push all of that down. And we're ready to do the bottom of our bucket. And the bottom of our bucket. It's kind of, I'm going to say kind of a starburst pattern, meaning that we're going to have a center and we're going to bring out um, bands from that center point. So we need to take a single band and wrap it around your hook three times. A single band wrapped around your hook three times. And you need to take two bands and pull through and get that set of three on those two bands. Release your hook on the one side and we need to match up our ends of our bands, making sure that we get the right band, the right side of the right band. And I did not that time. And how I can tell I did not because when I go to stretch this, it should stretch out and kind of be like an eye-ish looking. So I just need to change off one side and here I've got my open eye look. You can stick something right through that center, which we're going to be sticking a lot more bands through. So stretch this out like so. And we're going to be placing it on the loom from starting corner to corner over here, the furthest corner away. And then we're going to take additional bands and we're going to place our hook through the center of that little eye, the center of that little opening. And you want to pull through a band and reclaim it on your hook. And what's going to happen is you're going to stretch this one out and over to the opposing corner. And we're going to do this for every peg on our loom, the set of 10 pegs. Reach in through the center of that opening and stretch it out and over. And as you can see, it's not touching every, anything that's down below here yet. So here's my center opening I'm just going to continue to reach in, reclaim, and stretch over the available pegs. Reach in, pull through, reclaim, and stretch out over that other peg. One more peg on that side. Reach in, pull through, and reclaim. So we have something that looks like this now. We still have these pegs here to do. I'm going to reach in different direction for me. I do need to turn my camera a little bit, or my loom a little bit, so it's easier for me to get to. Reach in, reclaim, and pull to the peg. Reach in, reclaim, and pull to this peg. 
and reach in, reclaim, and pull through that peg. So we went from having a little eye to now we have a big eye or open center here. And the next step, we want to separate out our bottom two bands. You just want to go through and separate out your bottom two bands. Because the next step, we're going to finish off our little pot here. You want to make sure that you're grabbing the band on the bottom. So on every side, we're just going to separate those out on every peg. We're going to make our next step so much easier. Okay. Now, they're all separated. Our counter bands are down here, so my starting point's right there. Counter bands, we're not going to be doing anything else with those. We're, we're done with those for now, so you can take them off your loom or worry about them later. They were just there to assist me. I want you guys to go into your first peg inside the peg, not on the outside this time. Inside the peg, pushing back whatever bands are in your way, and you want to hook and grab the bottom band. You want to wiggle it out and you want to place it to the left peg. We're going to do this all the way around the loom, reaching into the peg, grabbing the bottom band, wiggle it out, and this one's a little tight for me. It's probably tight for you also, but you just want to wiggle out that band and loop it onto the peg that it came from. Reach in, bottom band, into the next peg down. Reach in, bottom band, next peg down. Reach in, bottom band, next peg down. And we don't have any pegs down, so we're going to have to come over. Reach in, wiggle it out, and go over to our right. Reach in, bottom band, wiggle it out, and come forward. Reach in, getting that bottom band, wiggle it out, and come forward. Reach in, bottom band, come forward. Reach in, bottom band, and forward again. Okay, now we're going to have three on our starter peg. Actually, there's four there. Sorry about that. There's four on our starter peg, and there's going to be four more on this peg over here, which you just want to pull and find the band that's on the bottom. You want to slightly separate out those bands on your starter peg, and the next peg to the left. We're going to reach in again, grabbing that band on the bottom, and wiggle it out, and we're going to leave it on our hook. You want to push it back here on your hook. Then you want to dig into that band on the left, or that peg on the left, and get that bottom band, and wiggle out that bottom band, and keep it on your hook. So it's kind of here like this. And then you're going to take your last band, pull through those two, reclaim that back on your hook, and slip knot it off. And that is what holds the entire piece together. Now we're ready to take it off the loom, and we're ready to cross our fingers that everything has worked out okay, which I think it should. Um, if not, this will make the bloopers videos. I take the back of my hook and you just want to relieve this pressure on all of these pegs. You don't want to just rip this right off. Um, some people don't actually watch the videos to the end, but I recommend that you do because if you don't, you're going to get your bucket looking like this and you're going to be mad because it doesn't look like a bucket. So just take your fingers, stick it in the opening of the bucket and stretch things out a little bit. You want to kind of stretch and turn. As you turn, that's allowing your bucket to get its shape. So here we have got the medium-sized bucket 
done as a terracotta flower pot. And our little securing band is right here. You just want to reach into the top of your bucket, grab that band, and hide it up in your bucket. But here we have got our medium sized bucket all done and ready for you to fill with popcorn or to fill with a flower as I will be demonstrating on my website also how to turn your bucket into a flower pot with the adding the flower and if you need additional sizes please remember they do come in four sizes the small the medium, small, medium, large, and jumbo. And there is our medium side by side. And as you can tell, I use Rainbow Loom caramel bands here. And I use just a generic um, blue band I found somewhere else on this one. So your band choice does matter as to the size of the bucket. So they're not all going to be exactly the same. I hope you'll post your creations on my Facebook page, Crafty Ladybug Rainbow Loom Creations. Visit my website at www. I don't know how many W's I said, but craftyladybugcreations.com. And also Instagram, if you tag me at craftyladybug, I can see what you've made with your creations. Thanks so much.